Hi guys, as requested, I'm going to review a video by Mitchell Hooper. It's called Stop Using Cold Therapy. As far as I know, this is the only guy besides me who has made a video against cold therapy. Ice baths are all the rage, and mostly for no reason. Uh, not entirely. There is a Strong. It is entirely for no reason because not only is it not beneficial for you, it's actually very unhealthy. An interesting thing about this guy is that when I first saw him, I thought that he's some guy around his 50s who has been lifting for decades, who's now talking about uh, cold therapy, but it turns out that he's 27 years old. <laughs> it's really crazy. Psychological benefit, in my opinion, but there's actually no substantial physical benefit to ice baths. Now, let me explain. For those of you who are getting mad, give me the benefit of the doubt and hear me out for a couple of minutes here. So, the initial... Yes, it's very hard for people to hear different kind of opinions. People just want to believe what they believe. It's very hard for them to step out of their closed minds. The idea of icing came from Dr. Merkin in 1978, where he introduced rice, which is rest, ice, compression, and elevation. And that was for any acute response to exercise. So, when you exercise or when you got injured, you should rest the tissue, elevate the tissue, compress it, put ice on it, and that will knock out all of the inflammation. And Which is a terrible thing to do because inflammation is always good for you without an exception. Having inflammation is a sign that a part of your body is damaged, for example, but the inflammation in and of itself cannot be bad for you seeing as your body creates this inflammation. Your body would never do anything to harm itself. Your body only tries to heal itself. As we knew at the time, no inflammation is going to be a good thing. This is still the dogma that some people stick to, and even some professionals in the field stick to. I'm not entirely sure why. Because in 2015, Dr. Merkin came out and he actually said, I was wrong because icing takes a helpful degree of inflammation and it knocks it. It takes a lot for somebody to admit that they are wrong, especially somebody who works in the field of science and medicine down to zero. So I went, I did a bit of research and there was, and excuse me for butchering your names, there's a paper done by Dr. Sayaloya and Dr. Schwarzendruber, um, and they tackled this exact topic. But the way that they put it, and I really like this, is that the body has to go through three levels of recovery for a tissue to heal from any level of cellular damage. And number one is inflammation. Inflammation is a good thing when it is in the acute sense. The reason being, inflammation comes in, and its job is to reduce damage. You have damaged muscle cells, you've got dead muscle cells, and something needs to come in to get rid of those. And so something comes in called macrophages. Macrophages both come in and clear out all the damaged tissue. Yes, macrophages are white blood cells, which, as he said, clear out the uh, dead tissue. They repair everything that's been damaged. And they also leave IGF-1. We'll talk about IGF-1 in a sec, but I do want to clarify. Macrophages are ha hugely harmful if they're entering a tissue without damage. And this is where we have to dissociate acute inflammation from chronic inflammation. If you have- That's incredibly wrong. Macrophages are always there to heal your body. Again, macrophages, just like inflammation itself, is created by the body. Your body only tries to heal itself. When you have chronic inflammation, then you have a problem which the body can deal with because you're damaging your body more and more. You're causing more and more problems, which is why it's never healing. An example of this would be working out a few times a week, running marathons. Your body will be chronically inflamed because you damage it nonstop. Or eating seed oils together with processed carbs, your arteries will be chronically inflamed. It's always you doing the damage. It's not as if you're just chronically inflamed out of nowhere. That doesn't happen. Chronic inflammation, macrophages will go into a healthy tissue with no damage otherwise and start trying to find... The body will never do that. White blood cells don't attack healthy tissues. There's no example of this, no proof, no arguments. He's making this up. Dead cells to clean up and it'll start eating away at the tissue. This is where we have something like tendonitis that exists for six months, 12 months, 18 months, and all of a sudden just something pops. It's because you've had macrophages in there slowly eating away at the tissue, making it more susceptible to injury and damage. No. <laughs> tendonitis is caused by exercising too much, for example. Everybody knows this. Why do you lie for the video? Is it because you do these strongman competitions or whatever? You don't have to live in denial. You can also just admit that exercise, of course, can cause a lot of damage to the body. Tendonitis is an example which most people are aware of. If you do too much, then you will injure certain parts of your body. Come on, man. So back to the role of macrophages in a helpful sense. They clear out the dead cells, they bring in IGF-1. 
Now, for those who don't know IGF-1, it is massively useful in cellular recovery at any level, okay? Whether it's bones, muscles, anything. IGF-1 is really the king of everything to do with muscle growth and repair. And that's coming from your macrophage. Yes, IGF-1 regulates your growth hormones. And because you are damaging those parts of your body, in this case, the muscles, it will try to make them uh, bigger and stronger because you are stressing those muscles. A body which uh, looks like it's been working out is a body which has been traumatized, stressed. Somebody who comes out of the gym looks very inflamed. That's why their muscles are pumped up. They have just damaged those parts of their body. You gotta understand that this is a traumatized and damaged body. People see it uh, the wrong way. They feel like they just became stronger. No, you just stressed and aged your body to adapt to lifting more man-made metal in a man-made building. Which is, which is coming from your inflammation. The important association that these two authors make is around inflammation and swelling. And again, I think it's really well put. Inflammation and swelling are not necessarily synonymous with each other. Swelling is basically that you've got these dead cells that have built up and your body is pumping fluid into the area to try to clear out that tissue. But since we're not clearing the, the dead cells out as fast as we're bringing in fluid to try to repair, you're gonna end up really big and really bloated, for lack of a better word, and you're gonna end up with a very swollen area of your body. The discoloration is also because you, you, you can't catch up fast enough to the clotting process that has to happen. When any tissue tears, there's gonna be bleeding to some extent, but usually we can clot that fast enough that we have no idea that it's happening. But that's why when you actually tear a muscle, you get huge amounts of swelling, discoloration, because you can't clear out as fast as you can bring it in. Now, Dr. Merkin, when he came out and he said, rice is not the correct um, protocol, he gave different advice, which is basically the exact same thing, but just take out the ice. Compression is still good. Elevation is still good. You definitely still need to rest tissues if they're actively damaged, which I half agree with. And this is going to be the protocol moving forward. So the inflammation is step number one in repairing a tissue. And you need to go through step number one to get to step number two, which is your repair. Exactly what happens if you use cold compression is that you stop the body from repairing that certain spot which you damaged. You need the inflammation. Your body creates it. As I said, if you do something stupid such as ice baths, then your body completely shuts down. You believe that you're dying for that moment. And once you get out of that situation, your body becomes insanely inflamed, seeing as it's trying to deal with the damage you just caused it. Whereas if you do cold compressions, you have the cold on that specific spot, which is not going to cause overall inflammation in the body. It's going to stop the inflammation for the time being. And uh, if you do it for too long, then it's simply not going to heal as well as it should. Whereas if you do cold showers or ice baths, which are even more extreme, then you create overall inflammation in the body, which is good in a sense that it's trying to heal you because you're an incredibly stupid slave. But uh, it's, of course, very taxing on the body. This is when we have the nutrients go into the muscle in this case, and it's going to repair the muscle and make that muscle tissue whole again. After step number two is done, we go through remodeling where we have both a neural component and a physical component of Wolf's Law. The body will adapt to the stimulus placed on it, given that it has sufficient time to rest and recover. So this could be that you're doing bench press, your triceps are damaged, your triceps are built back in a way that will make you a better bench presser, your neural patterns are made so we have motor units dedicated. Exactly, you're stressing and aging your body. That's why you look so incredibly old. Just to bench press man-made metal in a building which was created for slaves, so that you die quicker. Yes, sure, do that. You will grow. You can impress other guys and the girls will laugh at you. To bench pressing. And this is how we make progress. This is the whole physiology of being able. Yes, you make progress in a man-made building full of slaves. <laughs> Natural people laugh at you. They wouldn't even understand what you're doing. But to get stronger. And now to cycle this all the way back around. If we were to ice, icing kills not only uh, swelling, but kills inflammation. We don't get IGF-1 because we don't get macrophages. If we don't get macrophages and IGF-1, we don't have the cellular signaling to go to the repair stage. And if we don't have the repair stage, there's no way for us to- Yes, to put it simply, you go against what you need. You create this inflammation because you want to heal the damage. If you put ice on it, for example, then you stop the healing process. Slaves do this kind of garbage all of the time. The most important thing to remember is that your body 
always knows what it's doing. Get to the remodeling stage because we're trying to remodel a damaged tissue. So long story short, we need to go through this method and icing is not useful in a physical sense. I'm gonna do a whole separate video on the potential psychological benefits. He said physical sense and now he talks about psychology, but everything that's psychological is physical. Is it outside of your body? Is it in your soul? No, psychology is the science of your body, mostly your brain and your gut. Of ice baths, because that's something that I do believe in. And it's actually something that has me interested in potentially using that moving forward for the psychological benefit. When it comes to your strength. We'll see, maybe I'll review that in the future. To your muscle gain, muscle development, hopping in an ice bath is not going to be useful. If this is all confusing, there is a lot to- Like I said, it's not only not useful, it's actually insanely damaging to the body. To digest when it comes to exercise and nutrition and recovery. One of the most important things is that we're always developing our opinions. I always say, if you haven't changed your opinion from 12 months ago on anything, it's because, not because you're smart, but because you're done growing. And if you're done growing, there is no space for you to improve. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Lift heavy and be kind. Lift heavy and be kind. Stop lifting man-made metal altogether like a slave. Then you won't have to worry about inflammation also, especially when it comes to tendonitis, uh, your muscles, joints being inflamed. That's because you're damaging them. It is great that he said that you should uh, be open to new ideas. If you haven't changed your opinion about anything in 12 months, then you are not learning, you're not open-minded. Uh, you should always be open-minded, but 99% of people are very close-minded. They will not accept new ideas or beliefs. If they want to believe that cold showers and ice baths are good for you, then no matter what proof or evidence you provide, they will simply not want to believe that it could actually be different. I've proven it over and over again in my videos. It's incredibly unhealthy. There's so much proof out there, but if that's what you do, and you really want to believe that it's good for you, then you're just gonna believe that it goes for every belief. Thanks for watching.